Hey, aloha my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Uh, I think it's time that we talk filament. What do you think? You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so as many of you know that follow me on social media, especially over on Twitter, I've been enthralled recently with the Filamentum Vertigo Gray, and I've been sharing a lot of pictures of prints over there. Um, background on that is filament1.com had sent me a roll of the Vertigo Gray uh, by Filamentum to do a review on, and that's what we're doing here now. Uh, but I was so impressed with some of the prints that I just had to share them on social media earlier. So let's go through this and I'll tell you what I like about it and the very little that I don't like about it and we'll uh, let you make up your own mind. So when you receive the Vertigo Gray, it comes in a box like this. And inside of that box, the filament comes in a foil Ziploc bag. Now, the foil serves two purposes. One is it keeps your filament dry. Um, you put your desk in, in here as well. But the other purpose is, is it blocks UV light so that your filament can't degrade from the sunlight or fluorescent lights uh, blocking it out. So when you get your spool, it'll look something like that. Now, this is pretty far gone. Um, one of my favorite features of all of the filamentum filament is that it has this clear spool. So you can see how much you have left. So when it's, when it's full, it's all the way out. And as you're using it up, you can, you can kind of tell when you're getting towards the bottom of your roll. Wonderful feature. And this stuff prints just like butter. Uh, let me try to give you a close-up of just a couple of the prints, and I'll show off some of the details here. Now, actually, let me show you this one first. Now, one of the first things that I did was I printed an enclosure for a printer control board. And uh, this was the first thing that I printed um, before dialing in the settings. You can see here that the bridging is just perfect on these overhangs. Now, I had a little bit if you can see the discoloration here, um, you see I had a little bit of problems in this area just because my retraction settings were just a smidge off and um, was over extruding just a hair. But it's still a very, very beautiful print. Now this was all done with zero supports. So on all the sides, it printed all of these overhangs and did all of these bridges um, without anything to back it up. I moved on from there, and the next thing that I tried was <clears throat> this. Um, this is tiny, and it's, it's hard to see there, but if it'll focus, I'll show you close-ups on all of these in a bit. Uh, this is a drill bit holder. Um, it's Unfortunately, wasn't exactly what I wanted for the print, so this will probably end up going in the scrap pile, but it is a beautiful print. It printed flawlessly. The dimensional accuracy on all the holes was perfect to fit my drill bits. Uh, what it didn't have that I didn't like is it didn't have any mounting holes to, to hang it on the wall, and the hole goes all the way through to the bottom. So as, as a print, this was not one of my favorites, but the vertical gray was just flawless in that. Now, sticking with the practical prints, the, the last thing that I did, and this is the one I think that got a little bit of attention on Facebook, just because of that shimmer, that mirror shine right there on the bottom. Uh, this is a planter that I did for my wife. Uh, again, these were all done without any kind of support in any of the overhangs there on the sides. Um, and it just came out flawless. There was really nothing in the print that I could complain about. So to be fair to the filament, I know my thing is practical printing, but I wanted to uh, kind of see what other people might, might try to do with it and have a little bit of fun. So I did this pair of shot glasses. Um, again, the same 
beautiful reflective bottom surface. Now I attribute a lot of that to printing on glass, but you can see just the details. These are done in spiral vase. Uh, now they're not going to get used as shot glasses, but they will become little LED filament candle holders for the bathroom. And those are printed out just flawlessly. There's can't see any of the layer lines on these. Part of that is the, the texture that the Vertigo Gray has with just that little bit of speckle in there. It does a really good job of hiding the, uh, the layer lines behind there. Then I moved over to uh, printed these for my daughter as a just got a new apartment. They are Mario shot glasses, so they have the, uh, the coins I'm sorry, the uh, question marks on one side and then the bricks on the other. They're hollow on the top. And again, a little bit of Z-banding on these um, just because I printed them very quickly and at a higher infill. But again, you can barely see any of the layer lines. And I attribute most of that, again, to the texture of this vertical gray. It is uh, very, very good at hiding that. Next, I moved, moved over to the hollow droughty. Now, this is by far a far from a perfect print. Uh, it did a really nice job around the mouth and on the more solid layers, but I had a little bit of trouble with the, the retraction in the, the holes area. Um, but what I can say is that this was able to pull it off on the FDM much better than other filaments that I have tried it with. Um, and that same texture that we were discussing about the vertical gray actually kind of lends to, uh, even though the holes are there a little bit, it actually lends to the, the cosmetic appearance of the print. So the areas where it needed to be, it was really smooth, but the texture that was created there by that, the retraction nightmare of, of the holes um, kind of added to the print. Then the last thing that we printed here was the 3D printed ASPE's uh, My Little Pony Unicorn, the MLP Unicorn here. Um, again, it wasn't necessarily a flawless print. Uh, part of that I'm attributing to the, the setup of, of my printer and uh, dialing it in with this new smoothie board. But the parts that mattered um, are there. You can't see the layer lines. They're, they're just perfectly smooth. The texture again of the, of the filament almost gives it a, a furry like um, texture or feel to the hair and, and to the, the mane. It was able to print, if you can see it there, the unicorn. Uh, and I'm sorry it's hard to tell at that distance, but it was able to pull off the unicorn horn without melting or folding back in on itself. And this was also printed without any support. So all in all, the filament is very positive. My only negative um, that I have, uh, actually, let me show you this quick too. Just a, I don't really have a, a definitive way to show you the strength of this. I do have these two failed parts um, of, of the, the droughty, the hollow droughty. And let me just show you that these are very difficult. You can probably see my face, the level of effort that took to uh, actually break that thin little two millimeter part. Um, so these are very, very difficult to break. Uh, so as far as PLAs go, it holds up very nicely. Um, and the layer adhesion is very good. Now, back to what I was saying is my only complaint is I found that I needed to print this a little bit hotter than a lot of other PLAs that are not considered HT PLA. It is considered a PLA, but I found that I needed to run it at about 215 on my printers to be able to get the best layer adhesion and to get it to flow. Um, at 215, again, it, it, it shows just you know, how smooth and how wonderful it can be. That's really my only criticism of it was that it, it, it did need to be printed a little bit hotter uh, so I ran it at 215 on the hot end, and I ran it at 60 on the bed. Um, most of the standard PLAs, I'd run around 200, 195 to 200. 
sometimes up to around 210. When, it, when I start hitting 215 or 220, start, start thinking that the thermal properties might be a little bit different on the filament. Um, now that's not necessarily a criticism, but it is something to be aware that because the box shows that you're going to want to print it in a range of 190 to 210. So I, I recommend starting at the higher range, the higher end of that range. Um, and, and work your way back if you need to. I've also noticed as I've played with the temperature that you can get a little bit of color variation. So it'll either come out darker or a little bit lighter and shinier depending on how hot you print it. That's really the only criticism I have of it. And again, that's not necessarily a criticism of the filament. That's partially my machine that I printed it on. I did use the, uh, the DI3 for this. So your temperatures will vary. But all in all, I am very impressed with the Vertico Gray. I, I think its best attribute, as I've said numerous times, is that the texture on it kind of allows it to cover layer lines or imperfections in your print. Um, any blobbing that you might get, you can usually just rub with your finger. You don't even need to really sand it. And, and just a little bit of rub on any kind of nubs that you get. And it, and it flakes right off like salt and just gives you that really smooth finish. Um, and of course, when you're printing on glass or a really smooth surface, you do get that really awesome reflective, reflective glow there. So that is my review of the filamentum, Vertigo Gray. Um, I definitely give it two thumbs up. I think it is probably one of my favorite filaments to print with right now. Um, it's, it's, gosh, the color can just be so many things. I've joked around on social media about wanting to print my counter, kitchen countertops out of this. And obviously that's not practical, but it does have just almost like a slate or a granite type finish to it. And it shines up so beautifully. So, let me know what you think about it. Uh, grab yourself a roll, give it a try, and let me know in the comments or on social media what your experience has been with the Filamentum Vertigo Gray. Um, full disclosure, I said earlier, this roll was provided to me by filament1.com to review, but I was not compensated in any other way. So the opinions I'm expressing here are just my pure wow and satisfaction of the filament itself and the way it's performed for me. So with that, I wish you aloha, go forth and do great things.